I want to talk to you today about how the devil can come into your life and wreak havoc. He can, he can destroy you and torment you on the inside and he can torment you and destroy you on the outside. And sometimes it just happens and we've done nothing. You know, the devil just attacks. But other times, maybe there's something that we're doing that causes the devil to come in and destroy us. Destroy us spiritually, emotionally. It says here in Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 2, cities with strong walls are turned to rubble. Beautiful palaces in distant lands disappear and will never be rebuilt. Sometimes you might think you're a really strong guy. You go into the bar, you have a few drinks, you're feeling really strong. And you can go on that like that for years. But the Bible says this, Cities with strong walls are turned to rubble. If you don't give your heart to God, if you don't put yourself under Him, you're doomed for destruction. Beautiful palaces and distant lands will disappear. You might look good now. You might have it all together. But if you're serving Satan and you're allowing him into your life, and he's wreaking havoc in you, you're doomed and you need Jesus Christ. My friend Russ is gonna give you a short testimony of how God healed him and brought him to have a sound mind. Hello everyone. I'd like to start off by telling you that yes, a Christian can be possessed by the devil. A lot of you think that they can't be. But God has given you the choice. He's given you the choice of accept, accepting them or rejecting them. And the things that you do in your life have consequences. That means if you go to the bar or something, or you go out and you do things you shouldn't do, there's going to be consequences. And that's where the enemy is allowed into your life. I know about all this because I've been through it. I was diagnosed 25 years ago with schizophrenia. And I woke up one morning and it was completely gone. But that was only after I completely surrendered myself to Jesus. It's very important, folks. You gotta surrender yourself to Jesus. You gotta give him everything. And I still haven't given him everything. I know that I have to give him more. That's the one thing that you, if you give him everything yesterday, well, today is a different day. You gotta give him everything today. So you have to be diligent about it, and you have to be always seeking the Lord. There are things about a schizophrenic person that you don't know about. Schizophrenic people have two levels of thought. A level of in, inner thoughts that are perceived as their own thoughts, and a level of outer thoughts that are perceived as thoughts coming from others. And to a schizophrenic, the, the thoughts that are coming for others cause the conflicts. It's a conflict between your inner thoughts and your outer thoughts. It just snowballs and goes around and around and around in circles. So, I want to tell you that if you're given the chance by the Lord to pray for anything you want, don't ask for a million dollars because He won't give it to you. Ask for something instead like, Jesus, I would like to have the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Don't ask him. It's okay to ask him for healing, but he said that by your stripes, 2,000 years ago, by his stripes, do you know who gave him those stripes? It was the Father himself. The Father himself gave him these stripes because it says, by my stripes you are healed. So think about that one. 
And think about the fact that Jesus is waiting for you to open the door. He's waiting for you to open the door and for him to walk through and heal you. You've tried the rest, now try the best. Jesus Christ is the best. There's nothing else that can fill you up as completely as Jesus Christ. You've tried drugs, you've tried pornography, you've tried everything. But it just doesn't work. And I can guarantee you it doesn't because I've been through it. And that, was brought, that is what brought on my schizophrenia. The pornography in my earlier life. My early life. It still has an impact to this day. And you need to be set free from it. I am yet to be set free from the effects of it. But I am set free from the desire. But the effects are still there. Like I said, everything has consequences, folks. And it's, it's something that you need to do. Is put Jesus first. Amen, you. amen. And you know what? I'm just going to pray. Uh, you know, I believe there's some of you, and maybe just one of you. Maybe there's just one person right now. And in your heart, you're saying, you know what? I just really had it with life. Uh, I give up. I don't want any more of this life. You don't have to commit suicide. It's not all over. In fact, if you give yourself to Jesus, it's just the beginning of a new life with Him. So if you are a person who wants to change their life, you had enough, as Russ says, you've had enough of chasing drugs and alcohol and this and that and all the things that the world has to offer. You tasted it all and you found out this stuff is garbage. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I want to pray. And if you want to have a new life, I encourage you to pray this prayer along with me and really mean it in your heart. Lord Jesus, I want to change. I'm sorry for the sins I committed against you. Please forgive me. I humble myself and confess they were wrong and I ask you to forgive me in Jesus' name. Come into my life, Lord. I want to be with you in heaven. In Jesus' name, Amen.